Theresa Crime is a bi-weekly true crime podcast where we cover basically everything under the true crime sun. Murders, disappearances, we also cover a lot of local cases to Spokane and the Pacific Northwest. If you'd like to support Threes of Crime and get some extra perks, like early releases and bonus episodes, consider giving at patreon.com backslash Threes of Crime podcast. Hello and welcome. Thank you. What the fuck? We'll just restart that. Here we go. Hello and welcome to Threes of Crime, a true crime podcast. I'm Tori. I'm Emily. And I'm Lindsay. And that's our intro. Here we are. We are professional. <laughs> professional podcasters. We're podcasters, bitches. So today we have a story by Lindsay Kin. That's me. So I was thinking of doing different crimes other than murder. Okay. Because we all needed a break. So yes. this yeah. is, has not do with what I'm doing now, but I'm going to be working on Tammy Faye and I realized she's, there's a lot I have to go into. So I did this story instead that I've always wanted to do, but I, I was always scared because I knew it would make me real sad. The crow. Caca! Oh my god. I almost ran over a turkey on my way here. Oh! It was crossing the street. They're assholes. Man. They're fucking Why dicks. did the turkey cross? Oh. And they're all over the South Hill. Best be returning to the lab. Nathaniel, <laughs> it's getting dark. dark. <laughs> but it's the middle of the afternoon. It must be a solar eclipse. That's not an eclipse, Nathaniel. <laughs> Those are birds! <laughs> <laughs> oh my fucking god moira rose is i am positively bedeviled with meetings etc i don't want children but i would have children with dan levy just to see if they get the eyebrows. Okay, let me tell you a tale about the curse of the movie The Crow and Bruce and Brandon Lee's curse. Brandon Lee was probably like my first real, like I was a teenager, like my first lustful crush. He is fucking hot. Um, If you haven't seen The Crow, you fucking should. But here's a little like a, a rundown of the story. The Crow was first a comic before a movie. Creator James O'Barr wrote the story as a form of therapy for himself because his fiance was killed by a drunk driver. That's terrible. This whole story is very sad. The movie is very sad. Like the source material is very sad. So uh, the comic was released in a small number of prints in 1989. It was also released in graphic novel form in 1993. What's the difference between a graphic good but they don't have a little graphic novel and a comic book? I so a comic book thing. is the in individual volumes that come out like once a week. A graphic novel is all of that in one book. Oh. So it's like if you want to save your money, today. just buy the graphic novel instead of buying every Like individual. buying the whole season of a TV show instead of one yes. season at a time. Yes. Okay. Yeah, all right. Much. Yeah. Okay. Here's the summary of the comic. It's about a man named Eric Draven and his fiance Shelley. Their car breaks down on the side of the road and are then assaulted by some thug assholes. Oh, fuck. If his name was Draven, though, shouldn't he technically have been a raven and not a crow? Eric is shot in the head. 
Ooh. But he is paralyzed and can't do anything while he watches the dudes rape and kill. <gasps> mm-hmm. It's very graphic. Very graphic. Um, Eric dies hours later at the hospital. And a year later, Eric is then resurrected by a crow so he can exact his revenge on the assholes who killed him and Shelly. And the bad guy was also a bad guy in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Yeah, the bad guy is a great bad guy. Ed. He is a great uh, bad guy. He's the one that Alan Rickman said that she would cut its heart out with a spoon because it would hurt more. Okay, so the comic really became a cult classic and... Fan Jeff Most, his last <laughs> name is Most. That should be my last name. He is the Most. <laughs> Emily. Oh my God, Emily middle. Most. Your, yep. That's uh, funny. He worked really hard to get it made into a movie that, and then he is also produced this movie. On February 1st, 1993, the movie started filming in Wilmington, North Carolina. The film was only given a small budget, but the crew really wanted to make an amazing movie that really could stand with all the blockbusters that were coming out. It was like Jurassic Park. It was like that whole time. What was the year? 98 or 93? 93. Since the movie had a lower budget than most movies, that means the crews usually worked harder and longer than they should be. Mm. So this kind of sets up a shit show. So a lot of weird things happened as the movie was being created. According to Bridget Bass, Bass, I don't know. She wrote the book called The Crow, The Story Behind the Film. Okay, so she said uh, in the pre-production offices before they started filming, they received an an anonymous (laughs) voicemail saying, quote, don't make this movie because bad (gasps) things would happen. Okay. And they never... Okay, Simon. I know. Whatever the fuck your name is. Exactly. My enemies will come. If you don't give me money, I will bring fire upon your family. (laughs) You don't want to. I will kill you. (laughs) Make me mad. My God, so dramatic. Such a a little bitch. So they only shot the movie at night for this movie because that's just... It's all at night. Hate that. Yeah, so that adds issues to deal with. But on the first day of filming, two of the electrician crew members were caught in an electrical fire. (gasps) They were driving in a truck that had a cherry picker on it. And as the driver was backing up the truck, the cherry picker caught on like a high voltage wire that was carrying the electricity to the background set what is a cherry picker like an actual cherry picker it's like when people are in that like um little bucket bucket and then they go up that's called a cherry picker yeah oh so i was literally picturing a machine like going up and picking cherries i'm like why is that just hanging out on the back of a truck i don't understand (laughs) uh glad i asked i wish i could see that poor driver man he was caught on fire and was rushed to the hospital asap He ended up getting second and third degree burns on his body and lost both of his ears. And this is day one of shooting. That's not a sign. I don't know what it is. Yeah. So this gives that filming a vibe of alarm and exhaustion. Kind of vibe. (sighs) Baby, are you coming for the ride? (laughs) I just want to look into your eyes. While they were in North Carolina, there was also a hurricane. What the fuck? Can we guess the name of the hurricane? Brandon. Bruce. Jinky. <laughs> I don't know what. Hurricane Emily. Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what year was this? Oh, uh, God. 93. 93. Year I was born. Oh, my God. Did you bring this with you? Obviously. <laughs> Are we still in, like, February? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, I was still, like, an embryo or whatever. But, but your energy was, I was still my in energy the world. Was in the world. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Emily, you destroyed the whole backlot set. Yeah, so thanks a lot for ruining. Yep. You're welcome. So the whole backlot set, it's an area behind the main filming area that is like the permanent exterior buildings and stuff like that. So with all of that shit that's happened on this movie, the rumor fun times began. Mm-hmm. So rumors that the movie was cursed had reached Hollywood. And there was even an article written up in Entertainment Weekly titled, quote, Disasters Plague the Set of the Crow. Oh, bitch. They called it The Curse of the Crow. And one of the staff members in the production office who was quoted in the article saying, things have happened, but it's not like anyone is going to die. Is that called foreshadowing? Yes. <sighs> so that like jinxes the movie. And, and you know they didn't cleanse before because now oh, y'all have taught me not. what cleansing is. And I know. 
<laughs> One of our listeners was um messaging me the other day because she's listening to our episodes. She's like, some weird shit's happening at my house. And it was after I listened to the Warren episodes. And yeah, I just need to know how it closed my house. Smudge the fuck out of your yeah, house. Like, smudge yeah, the fuck smudge out it. of your house. Okay, so then that just doesn't add good energy. Bad vibes all around this yeah, place. Yeah, well, like, well, fuck, if this happened on the first day, what else is going to happen? Was the hurricane, like, was that all day one? Where the um, hurricane destroyed the back lot? That was, I think, in the middle of February. Okay. Yeah. So shortly after. So, like, started. within the first yes. month. Yeah. Yes, within the first month, yes. So the actor they signed for the main lead of Eric was Brandon Lee. Uh, usually I like him tall and vigorous, but there's something about him that alerts all the boners for me. That's <laughs> Lindsay loves getting boners. She does. She does I getting do. boners. Um, I said it doesn't hurt that he's all ripped and in incredible shape since he practiced martial arts mm. like his father. How could you not being Bruce Lee's son? Exactly. Yeah, totally. Like hello being frowned upon. I mean his dad invented a whole style yep, yep. of martial arts. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did it have like its own Kundo. legend? He's What's like a called? legend. Jeet Kune Do. Jeet Kune Do. Yeah. Bruce Lee like trained mm-hmm. Kareem Abdul Jabbar mm-hmm. and he also trained Chuck Norris. I know yep. who Kareem Abdul Jabbar is. He's a basketball player. <laughs> Do you know who Chuck Norris is? Yes. Brandon Lee was in a couple action movies that were okay, not groundbreaking, like Face Off or Con Air, which came around. Oh, that was another. Time. That was another shirt we almost got you with the hair. No, it's uh, it's <laughs> John. It's, here, I'll find it. I'll find it. Right? I'm almost it's, sad. It was didn't. Cage, and then at the top it just says John Travolta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we oh sent my God, it that's to amazing. each other. We we're like, this is perfect. That's amazing. So, um, he was definitely having during this time. He was having rising star energy. Uh, he was a great actor and an amazing athlete, and he really wanted to make a name for himself so he could get out of the shadow of his father. Mm-hmm. I don't blame him. Um, the Crow was going to be his launch pad into the acting world, showing his acting and action skills. Okay, so now we're back to the set, and we have Lance Anderson. And- Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson. Mr. An- Lance Anderson. <sighs> okay, so Lance Anderson was the special makeup effects artist on The Crow. Lance was given the job of taking care of Brandon and making sure his makeup was how it needed to be for whatever scene he was filming. Special makeup effects artists are responsible for keeping the continuity continuity? Continuity. Continuity. Jesus Christ. (laughs) Of actors' makeup and creating the look for that character as well. (laughs) Unless they are told to do whatever. In The Disaster Artist, did you guys watch that? Yes. Yes. And the girl is like trying to get a picture for uh, 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 not Tommy Wiseau. Who the fuck pl- wrote? Uh, oh my god, who plays Tommy Wiseau? Franco. Thank you, Franco. And he's she's like, I need a picture for continuity, and he's like, I just I'm just gonna wear whatever I want, and he's like, forty three belts on, and he's like, this is just how I'm gonna do it. So the continuity in the movie, there not that no the movie continuity. has any continuity whatsoever, but yeah, he loves his belts. Tommy oh, yeah. Wiseau loves his belts. So, in there's a show I watched about this. Um, uh, it's called Cursed Films. It's on Shudder. Ooh, I um, want to get Shudder. It's also, if you have cable, it's on A&E, I think. But, no, AMC, like, special shows. Okay. You can get Premium Plus, whatever. Right. They, they have taken a lot of really cool, like, horror movie stuff, and they're really... Like, Eli Roth works Ooh. with them doing history of horror and stuff. They do a lot of cool stuff. Cool. So, um, Lance, in the show, there sh- he opens his big booklet of everything that was from the movie set. So, he shows all the Polaroids he took of Brandon after scenes were filmed. But he also uh, had a picture of him acting dead from falling out of the window in the movie. Because mm-hmm. he's shot and then he falls out, yeah. falls out of a big Ooh. round window and okay he's dead so that was like it was really fucking eerie looking at those and knowing the outcome lance was such a sweet man and he what you could just tell he's still fucked up i mean i think all of them are mm-hmm. they're all very upset but like he i felt i think he felt it deeper so, so before i go into what happened on the set of the crow we need to learn about brandon's father mm. the motherfucking legendary bruce lee he was a martial artist legend and he was also a martial arts instructor he 
top many a celebrity like Tori said, Kareem, Abdul Jabbar, and Sharon Tate and Roman oh, Polanski. Whoa. I thought that did was so see, weird. Did you see Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? Mm. That movie? You need to. You, you should you see to. it. But also, yeah, there's there's a there's a Bruce there, Lee scene. There's a Bruce Lee yeah. scene. And that Bruce Lee, the guy that they got to play Bruce Lee is fucking amazing. Looks, I uh, just is very accurate. Yeah, his Bruce Lee's family was not happy. <laughs> Why? With his portrayal. Why? Because he's kind of an asshole. One of my, like, seriously, one of my all time favorite movies is, is Dragon, a Bruce Lee story. Oh, that's with what's his name? Uh, uh, it was Jason, Jason Lee, who's yeah. actually not related. And then the but chick, he's that also just beautiful. Linda, what the fuck is her last name? You know who I'm talking about. Yes. She was like in Dumb and Dumber. And yes. Lauren Holly. Yeah. That's she's her name. The mom. Lauren Holly. Linda is his actual, Linda Caldwell was his actual wife and Brandon's mother. He married a white woman. He did marry a white Back woman. Back in the 60s, I think, right? Yeah, it was yeah. a big deal. Yeah. Whoa. Um, so he was also an actor, director, screenwriter, producer, and philosopher. What is wrong with me, philosopher? What is wrong with what me? What is wrong with Philosoph- me? Oh, wow. <laughs> philosopher. Philosopher. Um, he's still f- influencing modern karate to this day, along with combat, sports, and judo. Bruce achieved so many amazing things in his short life before he died at the age of 32 oh, years old. What? Yeah, he was really young. He slipped into a mysterious coma and died. But see, oh here's... Oh, my God, the- I'm about to say all of it. Oh, my God, Tori. Okay, so Bruce suffered from seizures and headaches. So when he collapsed while he was recording audio for his movie, Enter the Dragon, and so they rushed him to the hospital. It was there at the hospital where he was diagnosed with cerebral edema. So huh. his brain was swollen. And a couple months later, on July 20th, 1973, Bruce said he had a headache and his friend gave him a pain med (gasps) that had aspirin and the tranquilizer mevoprobamate, (laughs) mevoprobamate. It's a lot of mevoprobamate, but but it's a tranquilizer for anxiety, which is a drug. Yeah. So he went to lay down for a nap and he never woke up. (gasps) It's that meant, is crazy. He turns out he was allergic to the meprobomopony. <laughs> Not going to try. Listening to you <laughs> just try and move past that. <laughs> when he took the out of the boat, I, just, just, um, just, you know, I <laughs> always imagine somebody yelling at their fucking stereo in their car it's or their phone. Blah, 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 yeah, blah, mean. Yelling at me. And I I'm cannot sorry. believe he died at 32. I didn't know that. I didn't know he I didn't dead. know he died that young either until I started getting in. So then he he was allergic, and when they did an autopsy, they found that he suffered the cerebral edema still because it had swelled up to thirteen <gasps> percent since the first issue. Oh so my like, god! So yeah, so that's like the base. So so what I was gonna say is so back before he, before he got really famous, he so after college. He opened up his own martial arts studio and supposedly a lot of the Asian and it was in like a Chinatown kind of area. And apparently it was Seattle. You mm -hmm. live in Seattle. Yeah. Seattle. Yeah. Yes. Because he came over from. So he was his parents were like actors and had toured around. So he was actually born, I think, in San Francisco. Yes. And um, his parents were in Hong Kong. And so he actually had gotten in trouble fighting with like these military dudes and so his dad got him out of mm. Hong Kong and so that's how he got to the US and then he went to college okay. and that's where he met Linda but after college he opened up his own martial arts studio and he was teaching anybody oh. that wanted to learn and the Asians in that area yes. were very unhappy because shouldn't be teaching well that's one of the rumors right is that the, there's a theory that the Chinese mafia put a hit on him for betraying martial arts secrets. Right. Oh my god. Yeah. And like in Dragon, and I don't know how true it is, but in Dragon, like Lee. they actually show, like he actually has a fight with another martial artist, um, and he's basically fighting for his right to party. <laughs> teach. Sorry. And he wins the fight. 
but the guy, as his back is turned, attacks him and he breaks his back. Now, I know that Bruce Lee did break. It didn't all happen, I don't think, at the same yeah. time, but he did. And then in the 60s, he got, he was cast on a show, The Green Lantern. Oh, yeah. Where he played Cato. He was like the, right, yeah. the sidekick. And then after a couple of years, that show got canceled. And so he was supposed to be the lead role in, um, oh, what the fuck? What's the name of that show? David Carradine oh. played, ended up getting the role yes, because because, he... because Bruce Lee was too Asian. Yes. So they gave the role to a white guy playing an Asian man. Welcome to Hollywood. Oh, what's the name of that show? I can't remember either. Kung Fu? Yes. I, th- I think, think it was it, something I, Kung Fu. Yeah, I think yeah. that, yeah. Anyway, so that's, but that's how he grew. And then, sorry, this is just my other little side bit of trivia. So after, um, so after he didn't get that show, um, it turned out he had this huge fan base in Hong Kong. So he went back to Hong Kong and he started making movies there and he became a pretty famous actor for his movies in Hong Kong. But it was when he made Enter the Dragon, which is the movie that he died making, that was what made him an international star. But it was basically after he passed away. Wow. Sorry, I spent a little Bruce so he, trivia. He no, didn't even awesome. get to like enjoy his no. fame at all, basically. Yeah, no, same with Brandon. I mean, he did. He was he was really famous in Hong Kong. Yeah, right. But he, but he wasn't famous. Worldwide but he was right, right. he got the worldwide fame from Enter the Dragon. I mean, everyone knows the name Bruce Lee. You yeah, know, exactly. like it's even though I have never seen, like, I knew who Bruce yeah, Lee was, then he, he did is. stuff with martial arts. So, right, yeah. interesting. Okay. Legacy lives on. That is terrible. It's, like, yeah, that's why. I can't believe he died so young. I didn't even know he was dead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be honest. He's you, like... buried in Seattle. Yeah. Really? Well, I didn't know that. And I was like, oh, that's crazy. I had no idea. Mm-hmm. Huh. She brought him back. So, Okay. <sighs> Okay, so yeah, the Chinese Mafia, that's an, uh, another rumor. Another theory is he was killed by a death blow. So a death blow is a type of strike that doesn't kill you right away. It can take days to what years fuck? to kill you. That's it's, terrifying. Uh, have you seen Kill Bill? Oh. I'm sorry. It's fine. I just, I'm sometimes sorry. you have and Guys, sometimes I know. you know. I know, I know. It's, but there's that is in that. Wow. There's like, yeah. Death the blow. other most theory, I don't know what that means. I like that. The most theory. The most theory. The one that is the most. Was the Lee family curse. So Bruce's parents had lost their firstborn son. And mm. losing your firstborn son in Chinese culture, it's not that good for is not good. I also, and, and this comes from Dragon, so I also don't know if this is true. But in the movie, um, his father tells him that they named him Sifu, which is a girl's name, because they were trying, he was trying, they were trying to hide him from the demon that yep. took that's the first what, one. <gasps> that's what I was, yeah, that's, no, that's fine. You said it better than I did. I don't mind you. I'm glad you know more about him. Oh, God, that's funny. But yeah, they would dress him as a, as a little girl, so it would trick, so he, he, he would trick kill. the demon. Trick, he would trick yeah. the demon that, so there was, yeah. Chinese culture is, like, it's, just very different. Oh just very, God. especially Absolutely. with children. Yeah. I just remember being know. young and people telling me that, like, you they kill have... all their children I know. except for one. Or, I remember All those that. rumors, like, when you were young. You no, but shit. I will tell you, there is a documentary on Netflix called Found, which oh, is... Oh, I've seen that, but not watched it. Like, I see. Which is thing. about... Um, a group of Chinese girls that kind of find out that they're all cousins and then it kind of goes through like they end up going to China and like meeting the aunties which are the ones I, I don't That's know it right. really opened my eyes to that whole process because I I knew about the one child sort of program thing um but to the way that you said it like you know it was they Americanized just killed off it was the... it was it, like it they called the kids well, what I mean, what really happened was people were abandoning their babies. And what was going to happen up, if they didn't? Like, what happens if they they had to pay? Uh, it was like they had to pay like eight thousand dollars or something. There was like a fine that they would have to pay. Most of these people are like rural. 
yeah. rice farmers that don't have ten dollars, let alone eight thousand um, dollars. But it was an amazing documentary. It teaches you a lot about what was happening at that time in China, and also like one of the moms talks about how when she went to pick up her daughter, that she had like marks on her her arm or like her wrists and her oh. ankles. And, like, thought that it was, like, abuse. But what it really was is, like, they're in these big, you know, orphanages and it would be very cold. And these are all, like, little babies that are constantly kicking their blankets and things off. And they couldn't let the babies get cold, so they would tie their blankets to them to oh keep them God. covered. Keep them permanently it, swaddled, because, basically. Well, yeah, yeah, because they you didn't have, like, one auntie to, like, 30 babies. That's insane. It's insane. It was just insane. Found. I bawled my eyes out. Oh, that makes me not want to watch it. But it's so... We all know I'm not going to cry about it, but yeah. It's so good. It's a really, really good documentary. <laughs> Sorry, sidebar there. But, and especially knowing um, a family that adopted two children, well, actually knowing a couple of families who adopted children from China, um, I don't know, it was really, yeah really interesting okay so adding to the curse theory that bruce's last movie he did was called game of death released in 1978 in the movie bruce's character is killed while filming an action (gasps) scene where he's been shot with a real bullet that was put in to the gun that's used oh in the scene oh yeah that's some, um, that's some, um, that's some rust shit. It's rust and Brandon. Oh my it's God. It's fucking wild. So this isn't how Bruce died, but this is some of the fucked up foreshadowing for Brandon. Lee's oh, death that happens Oh, Brandon died? Yeah. Oh. What do you think we've been talking about? Bruce Lee's death. Oh. Well, I knew that, I kind of thought oh, that it was like God. about the movie. And then I was just, commu- I was thinking of Bruce Lee at the same time. Oh, Got it. Okay. Sorry. No, no, you're it's good. fine. I didn't know Brandon died. No. Yeah. That's a bummer. That's what we're getting to. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Way to ruin the punchline. Sorry. I mean, everyone, <laughs> I didn't even know Bruce Lee was dead, so I mean. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. On March 30th, 1993, it's day 47 of a 50-day shoot on the crow. The scene that's being filmed that day is the one where Eric comes home to find his wife being abused in terrible ways. And this is right before Eric dies in the movie. In the movie, he comes home to his wife being abused. All the terrible. Yeah, stuff like he opens us. the door and there's this gang like right, right, right. right. That's what yeah. you said. Ugh. So they start filming the scene and Eric walks in the front door while Fun Boy, he's one of the bad guys, bad guys, and shoots he shoots him. They finish the scene and wait for Brandon to get back up, but he's not getting back up. Someone then like rushes over to him and screams for a medic to come check him. Because they say he's been shot. Like shot shot. So Lance and the producer Jeff um, and all the other crew members go to the hospital where Brandon was taken. And they waited for hours but were eventually told that Brandon had died. Oh my god. The actor who played Fun Boy was quote broken by the experience. So Fun Boy is the character who shot him with what was supposed to be a fake bullet but it was real. Yeah. I'll tell you how it that is terrifying. Like what that is so horrifying that Absolutely. that can happen. That's what like, it's like that what whole rest fuck? thing. It's, all, it's well, and I think that that's why people have no patience now for Alec Baldwin or really yes. like anything because like have we literally not learned anything since 1993? Absolutely. I mean, this was big. This was a big deal. Yeah, it's like you don't learn that if you are cutting corners and if you are working people to death, if you are hiring people that are not union you're hiring locals yeah and then they can work you however long they fucking want it's just because alec was also a producer yeah so he had a hand in some of the shit that is really terrible and sad. how old was he brandon um that's what i thought he was also he was like 32 yeah he was like almost the same age yeah how old was brandon when his dad died uh, i know i'm asking all these questions no, that you have i was like seven or eight yeah i don't I don't know why I didn't write down. That's okay. That. I just, I'm curious. Um, did he have any other siblings? Yes. Yeah. And his sister. Her name is Shannon. Is she still alive? Um, she is. She was also had a cameo in Dragon Bruce Lee story. She was the oh, singer wow. that sings the Mama's I've never the seen, I should watch that. I've seen parts of it. He was 28. 
Fun Boy, the actor who played Fun Boy was fucked up for the, like, he died in his 60s, 60s, I think, in not a good way. So here's what happened with the gun. When they use guns in movies and TV, they use bullets that are called dummy rounds. These look like real bullets, but they have the gunpowder removed. Is it because dummies put the actual fucking bullets in there? And so they're like, you know what we should call these? Dummy bullets? Because you dumbasses don't know what the fuck you're putting in these fake ass guns? My I'm God. I just don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand how you put a real bullet into a fake gun. In what world is that going to end well? This isn't a real bullet, though. Yeah. A this- real bullet didn't do it, but. Yeah. Okay. Let her oh. tell the story, <laughs> Emily. Sorry. I'm so frustrated. So they remove the gunpowder. The end of the bullet still has a primer on it, but that must be removed before it's used in a scene because that will give it more kick to fly out of there faster, harder. If the primer is kept on the dummy round, it gives it just enough power to be shout at, shot <laughs> out. <laughs> But not enough to leave like the barrel of a gun. So that dummy round can get stuck in the barrel. So you got just like this weird little guy stuck in there. And you can look through the barrel to make sure there's nothing in there. Mm -hmm. So before the scene, no one checked to see if the barrel was cleared or not. (laughs) Wow. Before using it. And usually there are like three people who are in charge of the guns. Like the armorist and then uh, two other people. But like that's it. There's like extreme... Rules and regulations and shit, but, you know, not everybody follows the rules. But, that's, but yeah. yeah. They should, though, because the way they have the rules, people don't get shot. It's true. When a blank is loaded into the gun, it has no tip, but is full of powder to make it, the gun shot look real. Make but, it bang. Yes. Uh, what, so, um, uh, Massey, so Michael Massey was the real name. That's of right. Thank you. He died of um, stomach cancer. Oh. Who is that? The, the guy I just showed you a picture of. Michael fun Massey. boy. Oh, fun, fun boy. boy. Do you know that Michael put himself as fun boy on our um, Hulu and Netflix accounts? And it's boy with an I. Fun boy. And our Amazon Prime really account. really like fun boy. Yeah. And this fucker, fuck boy. he does things like that that I find like months down the road. Like one time... <laughs> One time he put mistress in his phone. Oh and I God. remember, and I like, I obviously don't like look through his phone. I was looking through somebody's numbers and I, or for somebody's number. And I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> and at first he was like, oh my God. He's like, that's from like four years ago. I put this phone and it's like not a real phone number. It's like six, seven, zero, 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 zero. And I was like, what the fuck is this? And he's like, oh my God, bitch. I did that years ago. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck, man? And then he changes his name on Spotify. He takes bites of the cheddar cheese and puts it back in the drawer. Oh my God, he's like the long con. Like he's a long joke. He's a long con. Long con. We we have our short cons that we do to each other. And he likes likes the long cons. That's amazing. I find things years down the road. I I couldn't do that. I would would do it then want immediately them to open the drawer. That's the immediate gratification of a practical joke. Did you guys see uh, our friends, Paranormal Files people? Colin. 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 His girlfriend, Courtney, posted a video of herself scaring him. <laughs> and she it's literally like six times where she's hiding behind a door. And one time he comes through and he gives her like a, ah. <laughs> it sounded like a song. And oh my God, the compilation of him getting scared is fucking hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> His face is the oh best part. Oh my god. Oh. Oh. <laughs> my boss did that to me the other morning. Like I was making coffee and he came in and I didn't hear the door open. And I turned around and I saw him. And it sort of registered because he did his like hello, hello that he does in the morning. And then I screamed. <laughs> <laughs> Late oh my scream. god, you scared the shit out of him. I was, yeah, he got a look at me like, what? <laughs> it was just like, I was so tired. It took me a minute to realize that there was somebody there. And I didn't, it was like, I, I clocked that there was indeed a person right next to me that I was not an- expecting or anticipating. But it did not connect to me that it was him. So that's why I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so the gun in the movie had a dummy head stuck in the barrel from being shot two weeks earlier. 
So it was sitting there for two weeks. Amazing. When the gun was loaded with a blank, it shot out both the dummy head and the blank, which makes it a legit bullet projectile. After his death, the crew did not want to continue on with the movie, even though they were close to being done with filming of the movie that they didn't feel right carrying on because they felt like it was truly his movie. But um, I just feel so bad for Linda Caldwell. Like, well, you lose Brand, your husband. He was set to marry Eliza Hutton. They were going to get married right after this movie. Who's the lady you just mentioned? His Linda, mom. his mom. Oh. To, like, lose your husband at 32 and then yeah. your son at 28. Like, that's just... Eliza and Brandon's mom, Linda, talked with the producer, Jeff, telling him that Brandon was so proud of his work and the best way to honor him was to finish and release the movie. They asked for Lance for him to come back to help finish the movie, the makeup artist. Mm -hmm. He was so heartbroken by the incident, but he wanted to do whatever he could to make sure the movie got seen, at least. They asked Lance to make a mask of Brandon's face, but with the crow makeup on it, and that they would put that on Brandon's double. So that's how they did a lot of the scenes because it makes me feel some type of way. But you I mean, can't I mean I never you like, can't you can't tell. No. I've never noticed it's in watching fucking the creepy. crow. Yeah. It's, it's like a mask that like moves like no. it's or like it's No, like a, because um well they had filmed the majority of the yeah, movie by they had, the time like they did with died. Paul Walker. Kind of like yeah. the same thing. I think they yeah. had his brother come in and they like CGI'd his yeah, face. Yeah, just on like his Aaliyah brother. with Queen of the Dam, they had her brother come in. And okay. He, yeah. Uh, Lance was saying how when the double was wearing the mask, the crew was legit fucking creeped out and they had a very hard time with it. When I was at the Museum of Death, one of the things, one of the sections was like how they used to take photos of dead people. Yes. You know? And they would make the masks of their face and like all across the the top of the walls were masks of people's faces, including celebrities like Robin Williams was there. <gasps> Yeah, I and don't it's like, like that. it creeps you out. I'm so bummed I didn't get to take pictures, but. Okay, so in the comic, there is an important character called the Skull Cowboy. They did this extensive prosthetic and makeup, makeup effects to create this walking skeleton cowboy. And he was played by the amazing character actor, Michael Berryman. Oh, um, oh, he was in um, Hills The Hills Have, Have Eyes. Eyes. Yeah. He was also in Weird Science. He was in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Ooh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's the Nest. The original is a good The Hills movie. Have Eyes and Weird Science. Devil's Rejects. And he was also in Z Nation, and that was filmed, filmed here. Filmed here. Spokane. I also saw him from afar at the Crypticon Horror convention Horror. I went to years ago. It's one of my favorite cons in Seattle. And he was incredibly nice. He told really great stories. He was there for the Devil's Rejects mm. panel because I think it was 10 years or something like that of all of them were there but him and brandon had filmed a scene already but they all they had one more to do so um it involved dialogue between the two characters mm. with brandon now gone they had to take him skull boy out of mm. the movie entirely oh, because a bummer because really? they couldn't do the it was scene like because they couldn't, couldn't do, the, do scene. the scene yeah in the oh. movie where the scene where he walks in the door and like is the character is killed. They had to really start doing montage. They had to do montage scenes because they only had so much footage of Brandon yeah. with his fiance. And then Oh, so that's why it's kind of like that's a really cut yeah. a lot because they couldn't they literally they only had to use it. what they could and then they used his double right. when they could. So mm. like you see his back a ton. That's his stunt. Right. Michael talk okay, so Michael talks about his thoughts after hearing the news. And he was so sad for Brandon's fiance, Eliza, being cheated out of that love that they had and how it can be gone in just an instant. He talks about the curse of the crow, also saying crow croat. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Lindsay is <laughs> finito. Croat from the crow. Quote from the cro cro croat. Jesus. I like croat. <laughs> I really like <laughs> croat. <laughs> okay, so he says, the crow is not cursed. The crow was created out of love and loss. In my opinion, Brandon died because the studio cut corners. Michael said that they had sent home the weapons expert that they first hired, probably because he was in a union and where they filmed, it was a right to work state. So by hiring a local armorist to take care of the weapons, they can work them longer mm -hmm. without getting in trouble. Mm -hmm. 
But when a person is incredibly overworked, you get fucking burned out. Mm-hmm. And even little a little mistake can cost a life. So mm-hmm. now this is all I'm <laughs> just I'm just sitting over here like mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> sorry. He says now this is all the opinion of Michael of what happened from his view, but this is also allegedly what I think happened as well. I think with this movie already being dark and about deep love and grief and trying to create and keep the curse ideal alive makes the fucking fucked up shit that happened on set make sense. Yeah. Because the, an- the true answer is never the easiest. So it's easier to believe in the supernatural, I feel like. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. A curse is so much easier to blame than the reality of what really caused the death. Mm-hmm. And people. Yeah, the fact that it was most likely over saving money. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's always over saving money. Yeah. People fucked up and that resulted in death and it's not as sensational. But it fucking <laughs> said it fucking should be, but welcome to America, LOL. That's what I wrote. Lol. But I mean it is I, I mean, I get it. Like it is weird. It's weird. It's tragic that Bruce Lee died yeah. at thirty two. And, you know, he died because he took a medication that he shouldn't have taken. That, he, yeah. He you know, the, know. the end. It was you know, basically and he was on, innocent. I feel like he was on some, like, other stuff. I mean, Probably. both of them were accidents. It was the 70s. Yeah. Like, you know? Everybody was on shit. And, um, Usually. It, yeah. like you said, it's. It keeps the legend alive. It does. So I was probably in my early teens when I watched The Crow and I heard random rumors about it and that Brandon died filming a scene. And The Crow was so perfect for my angsty teen heart at the time. And I really connected to the loneliness and then dead intense loneliness of the movie. I have a question, Lindsay. Yes. You didn't have any siblings. No. Did you spend a lot of time by yourself as a kid? Yes. Did you want to, like, hang out with other kids or were you just like... Um, I I liked both, but I wasn't treated very well, usually. I mean, that's what you keep... Yeah, I yeah. keep hearing terrible stories of yeah. adults saying terrible things to you, first of all. It's one thing... I mean, when kids say it, it's fucked up enough, but, like, when yeah. adults say it, ew. Yeah. Yeah. So you were just kind of, like, like alone. wallowing up pretty quick. Yeah. You were just chilling by yourself. Yeah, I learned how to entertain myself really yeah. well and be okay with being alone. I mean, uh-huh. that was the good, that's a good thing. I, was, I agree. I learned how to deal with it's okay to be alone. What got you into horror movies? Um, Because all the pretty people die. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that was like Jason just came out of you right the, there. She just came out right of that so fast. <laughs> all the pretty people die. But am I wrong? No, you're not. No, you're not wrong. Huh. I felt and they're always the dumb ones that like that go inside true. when true. you're like, don't fucking go inside. Yeah. And then they yep. go right inside. Um, I fell in love with Adam's family movie when it first mm. came out. And that just really made me realize. Like, like opened your eyes to yeah, something I, different. I like all the dark, but I didn't start watching horror movies till my teens. Hmm. Really? Cause I mean, no, my mom never watched it. I wasn't around it. Hmm. But then once I found it, I realized it, was one of my favorites because it seems the most honest, like yeah, the story than a rom com or something. I don't know if that makes sense. No, it does make sense. It makes I like me knowing think that more than really makes you question things versus yeah, makes like you watching about, some shallow thing. Yeah, like sometimes I'll watch a movie and I'll think about it for weeks because it'll have that thing huh. to it to make it think about that. Interesting. So I've, uh, oh yeah, I just said I've loved all the vampires and the dark anti-heroes. Mm-hmm. Um, the Crow also really paved the way for the movies with this look and feel with like the Dark Knight with um, Heath Ledger mm. and the Matrix and more comic book adaption movies. There's a scene in this show where they do side by sides of the Matrix and the Crow. And I really think the Wachowskis took some from the quote the crow in a really cool way like when they're running across the roofs of the buildings mm-hmm. it's really similar and it's great it's, it's really neat looking and then they like in the dark night they had the big bat in flames mm-hmm. and he lit a big crow in flames in the movie it was- i didn't watch the dark night till i was dating michael I'm not Actually, surprised. not till we got married because I was making centerpieces at the same time I watched the movie. I specifically remember. Oh my god! 
A lot of doilies from the dollar store or something. Oh my god, that is a fucking hard movie to be watching while making I know. sad pieces. I know. Well, you know, I'm not really into in movies. The I gotta be doing something. That's, yeah, I do too. That's when I, when I actually saw it in the theater. I really can't sit still. I don't, that's, I, I can't go to the movies because I, as soon as I said, as soon as the movie starts, I immediately have to pee. <laughs> and I'm just miserable for a million years, like rumple fucking still skin. Uh, okay, producer Jeff Most says, I do believe that there is a good film there and that stands on its own merits. And I'm proud of the film. It really is a very unique piece of art and filmmaking with a central performance by Brandon Lee that is really, truly incredible. And I wanted to quote Michael Berryman talking about this movie and his friend Brandon. He said, you can't be prepared for these moments, but you can carry on in honor of those that have left us. So I cried at the end of writing this. That is so sad. And I tried watching the movie and I just started crying so I couldn't do it. But it's on... uh, And it's called okay. The Crow. The mm-hmm. Crow. There's a couple, like, there's Because isn't there also... Total? They made, yeah, they made a few, I think like, there's after. three after. And the second they had Edward Furlong be the Crow guy. Cool. They well, just had another... Also a movie called The Birds? Yes. yes. But that's from the 60s. That's Alfred, that's Alfred Hitchcock. Hitchcock. Yeah. Oh. Can I request something for our Instagram photos? Yes. Can Moira Rose be on them, please? Of course. Please. I need Send the me image a... of her, like, in yes. her little fucking thing. That was really sad. It was a sad time. Um, We will link um everything all we've the, talked yeah, about. All the, <laughs> all the, the Bruce Lee story. We'll yeah, we'll the... link everything. Um, What do you guys think about Lindsay's real, real stories? I want to tell everybody how proud I am of your wrestling knowledge. All the people that responded. Yeah, yeah. So we <laughs> made started. Me super happy. I didn't know the answer until I saw the answer. And then I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, I That's remember that That's when I was story. like, Emily, you went hard. I want to know what people's thoughts are on the real real. Yeah. And we've got fucked up Fridays. We've got a lot more Instagrammy kind of fun stuff coming, yeah. like more interactive stuff for you guys to like. And if there's like not like a, if there's a crime story you want us to look up that's not murder, but it's still. Mm-hmm. In our oh, link tree and the description, we have how to contact us. So yes. do that. Yeah. Um, and leave us a review. Wherever please. you listen. Yeah. Let us know what you want to hear more of. Yeah. There was a lot of cutting people up and like <sighs> mutilation, yeah. mutilation and child, rape, rape yeah. everywhere. Children. Yeah. So, so um, we, we needed a mental break from that. Hard. Yeah. Remember who you are and what you represent. And don't put. Check Do the... your job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Check man. the gun holes. Check the gun holes. <laughs> Check the gun holes. I'm just Some imagining gun nut so is many gonna people, be like, God damn it. fucking idiot girls. <laughs> Check your gun holes. No way to... and Don't shoot people. There's a girl with a gun sitting next to me yelling the same thing, so it's okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm the one with the yeah, gun. Yeah, you're the one with the gun. You know how to handle one. them. Oh, you're <laughs> the only one of yeah, us. Yeah, notice how I gun. haven't shot anyone before. You gotta properly know how to handle oh, a yeah. firearm. Yes. And I only carry it when I used to carry it a lot more until COVID happened and then I never left my house. But I liked it for Mary Kay stuff because it was a bunch of us girls flying to a different city and I was the one oh, that absolutely. was like... Oh, absolutely. Oh, too bad you can't bring it to Concealed Vegas. carry. I can take it to Vegas. I can't take it to the concert. That's sure, what I was I'm sure, thinking. but I could take it to Vegas, technically. Probably. I thought about doing it just because it's us three girls and we're out the night before. <gasps> okay, wow, that was terrible. Yay. Use guns correctly. Don't fucking shoot people. Don't be an idiot. Do be your safe. fucking job. I.E. Tori. Thanks. Bye. We love you. Thank you. Peace Goodbye. out. Goodbye. Goodbye, baby. Goodbye, baby. Goodbye, baby. Goodbye, baby.